Ma me vana se ma Pen Dream TV. Pen Dream TV de o se dem yopo. Uh, he speaks about um, having a simple flat tax for individuals and companies. He speaks about reviewing the VAT structure. And he also speaks about what I believe is a tax amnesty. He says a clean slate in 2025 for individuals and businesses. And he also um, speaks about a digital audit of businesses. And most importantly, uh, he says that it will be done every five years. It should be done every five years. And um, he's also repeated the issue of uh, scrapping of e-levy. We also know that we are on an IMF program and there is also a tax revenue uh, component in terms of the deliverables. What do you make of uh, these proposals by the Vice President? Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> it's loaded and I don't know how much time we have, but let me take the issues one after the other. Maybe you may interject after. So I'm going see first. Um, <clears throat> first of all, um, the government introduced an amnesty in 2017 under Act 955. There has been no accountability from GRE or the government about its assets to parliament. Uh, of course, amnesty is lapsed, so it lapsed. We are going to do another amnesty. We are falling into the trap which stop many countries from using amnesty, for example, India. And that is because when you do frequent amnesties uh, or amnesties at certain interval, what taxpayers expect that you will come back with an amnesty. And therefore, they just wait for the tax, tax to be wiped out. So if we did one in 2017, down the road, we are going to do another one. Those who have been non-compliant, you know, will just wait, you know, for next year. And there will be pressure on whoever waits, you know, to do an amnesty because it's called in taxation race to the bottom. You know, so what? Do you expect an NDC response that they would also do an amnesty? So I think we should be very careful. Um, and there are other reasons, apart from this slippery road, you know, one, Taxation is based on voluntary compliance. Taxation is based on me and you meeting our tax obligations, you know, voluntarily, which we also call self-assessment. So what are you saying? You want a section of the population to be complying voluntarily, you know, with the law, and then their reward is what? Those who did not comply would get an amnesty. Secondly, the tax mechanism through this voluntary compliance has a certain element of compulsion in it. That is, everybody working for Metro as employees, and even if you are a, a, a consultant, they withhold tax from your salary. Metro will withhold tax from before they pay you the net that you are supposed to declare. So, whether they like it or not, employees, contractors, service providers, and others are having their taxes withheld as source. Are we saying that all these people who have been dutiful, their reward is to allow those who have not complied periodically, you know, to wipe clean, you know, their, you know, their obligation to the state? You see where the difficulty comes in, which is why many countries, you know, have moved away the alternative which we have in our law is to allow those who have not been compliant to come to an agreement with the commissioner general be given a period of time you know maybe three to six months you know to settle their tax obligations you know that the tax system is deemed to be fair and then we all move towards compliance high level of compliance that is what countries are doing these days and that is what is in our law. So I would warn against this populist, quite populist, you know, amnesty. And if we are going to do it, let us know what was the outcome of the 2017 amnesty. 
And what was the level of his success? You know, before we even launch into another, you know, a, a form of amnesty. So this is my first point now, on amnesty. Okay. Now, yes. on the issue of harassment, the vice president makes the point that the GRE sets unrealistic targets for its staff. And then they go, in order to meet these targets, they go harassing people. I want you to, to take us through something. I know that you worked with the VAT office before we had that merger which created the Ghana Revenue Authority. And then you became Deputy Finance Minister and then Finance Minister. When it comes to tax revenue targets, who sets them? And, and what, how do you go about setting these revenue targets? Um, for employees, obviously, your level of taxes you know, can be determined by GRA from your salary. And then they allow you, you know, the necessary, they make, they have the tables, which they publish, which take account, you know, of your salary. Uh, for most employees, sorry, for most non-employees, corporations, individuals, and the rest, we come back to the voluntary compliance. You are required to inform GRA about your estimated annual tax. It is only when you do not do that that the Commissioner General will use information at their disposal in the, in the system regarding your history, or they will look, uh, look at third party information like supplies, you know, from which withholding have been made to gauge your level, you know, and various other factors, including even net worth, you know, how did you build your house and things like that, you know, to estimate your potential tax liability, you know, and this is important for corporations and self-employed persons. Now, another misrepresentation, if I may use that word, is that, you know, uh, the taxes, uh, uh, sorry, these people who do not have withholding of their tax, you know, are harassed and uh, arbitrary high and the rest. One, you can appeal against the commissioners, you know, estimation. But the more important point is that as far back, and you mentioned the tax reform, as far back as Professor Mills' time as commissioner, the, what is done is that, let me explain quickly, what is done is that your tax is taken annually, and then you have to, for corporations and self-employed persons, you know, you have to estimate, you know, once the amount is estimated, it's divided into four. And then you have to make quarterly payments, it used to be in arrears, but now, sorry, it used to be in advance, but it's now in arrears. I will explain the difference. And the rationale is that rather than you waiting to the end of the year before you pay a heavy amount of money, as well for those who don't have good liquidity practices and they don't put money aside, it makes it easy for you to pay the quarterly so that, you know, you can then ease your payments. When you pay in advance, it means that the estimate is calculated at the beginning of the quarter. This has been changed for the payment to be made at the end of the quarter so that you are deemed to have earned the income for the quarter. You know, and therefore you are supposed to pay the, make the payment on the quarter. So when you estimate your annual, you divide it by four. So we are no longer in the system, you know, which the vice president is recommending. But let me say that the harassment is coming from stopping, stopping the tax reforms, phase two. If you recall, immediately Professor Mills came to power as president, as a tax expert, we created GRA, you know, to lend clarity to the operational powers of the Commissioner General, just as in the U.S. or anywhere. So when it comes to operations, the Commissioner General's work is final so that there will be no political interference, no other interference. If you are dissatisfied, then you can go to the courts. One of the things which have been outstanding, which to the credit of this government they've done, is the tax tribunal, which is between the courts and the Commissioner General's powers. So if you do not agree with an assessment made by the Commissioner, a decision taken by the Commissioner, you can go to the tax tribunal. In fact, you can go with an accountant. You can go on your own. It's meant to be uh, constituted by particular people who understand. It's chaired by a lawyer so that you can even represent yourself. 
that is a mechanism that we have so this harassment and everything i think we should make the book you know work so that those who feel harassed you know can go the one reason why the domestic in particular and i link it to the reforms have become a difficulty is that you remember west blue you remember single window which is now icons that was phase one of automation if you we call it automation you can call it digitalization the phase two after the measure of irs and vat was to have a comprehensive domestic tax it system which would interface with the custom system that was going to be phase two from 2017 just like give me some the expenditure side from 2017 these reforms have been stopped so the question is to the vice president why stop it because if you do that let me give just two examples we spoke about withholding from contracts so if the commission if let's say controller government agency and other uh, taxpayers who withhold and who file the return for the withholding that they, they did then put it in their domestic tax system with your tax number they can compare for example the vat one whether first one whether you have been paying your tax that's why they withhold it and is it the right amount of tax given the information that they are gathering two for example much of vat which is taken as refund or uh, input tax credit or a credit by businesses are from imports and the amount paid against which credit or refund is being taken is sitting in the custom system so why haven't we completed the domestic tax system which is now an imf conditionality something that we started voluntarily the tender had been made by understanding for almost two years no decision has been made so in the absence of that information with which the tax official will go to the field armed with some information about your performance then the gra will have to do and use other means to estimate and that is where it comes across as harassment we should advance and in another way we say we are doing digitalization it's unfortunate that these reforms have been delayed so for example we have the vat portal let's come to the, the domestic i think there's a domestic you know firm that has done the vat invoice portal moving it to be digital but without a, a gra domestic tax system to analyze and use it to check the debit you know the credits for the uh, refunds and the rest what's the use is just sitting in the in the system as a database in the in the in the in the system for for the company and then it will be taken without information from customs and others you know because the domestic tax system has not been done this is how we improve compliance this is how you go to the taxpayer and then you know the taxpayer knows that you have information about them and we improve compliance and it is it doesn't look like a harassment you are moving away from the arbitrary way of doing things you know to a more scientific way and let me link that quickly you know to your point the point that uh, uh, the vice president made on field audits being done five years and the rest no it is random if you have the information and even in ghana there is no way in which gra can go audit every taxpayer we are talking about employees employers you know self-employed before you even come to vat exercise there's no way they can they can uh, do your audits even every three years and so there is a random aspect of it and then a sample is picked and then they go to the field and they check when you interface the systems also you get information which show that some people need better observation and therefore you can go to them you know twice three times in a year once they start behaving then they fall under the random system so it is not like the countries have an automatic five year three years they know it depends on the the taxpayers are stratified between those who comply well and those who don't comply you cannot implement this system without the domestic tax system interfacing with the customs system with the controller system you know with even payments made by the bank after all that's why we are using the team and the rest
Of course, some of the information is, is private and you may have to go to court, you know, to get it. But that's the essence of the tax identification number. That once the system, domestic and import, are holding a lot of information, they can interface, you know, with other taxpayer systems. You know, because the filing is being done electronically. Also, VAT, income tax, and currently the custom systems are all automated. So what is missing is the delay in implementing the domestic tax system. Now, Honorable, let me ask you this. Now, the Vice President speaks about a simple flat tax and also a review yes. of the VAT structure. But just before, before we even speak about this too, I mean, the question I asked earlier, I wanted to find out this. For example, if you go to Parliament... And you announced that for the year 2025, we expect to get 100 billion cities from tax revenue. How do you come by this figure? And who sets this target, this tax revenue? Actually, the targets start with work done by GRE. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. Because GRE that is holding the database you know, for the taxes, whether it's VAT, whether it's corporate income tax, personal income tax, excise, import duty, or the levies. You see, where the database becomes important in an era of digitalization, which was what the, the, the trend that we were moving towards. So it's GRE. Now again, what I know of GRE, both as a practitioner and as minister, is that GRE has a solid database which tells the Ministry of Finance Policy Division that based on the trajectory from the past, right, we they have a projection into the future much against the database for corporate uh, companies, as well as the large ones, you know, large companies, large who are also the large VAT, corporate income tax, excess and other taxpayers. That's where the 8020 rule comes from. 20% of these taxpayers can you can use your database to estimate clearly 80% of the tax revenue that you're going to earn. Then the rest is done through other sampling and other techniques. So the expertise is within GRE, which is now unified. It used to be within IRS, within VAT, and then within, you know, customs. Now you see under one commissioner general, under one GRE, all these, in, you know, systems are interface, and that is what is lacking. The customs officer has been trained, both in VAT, you know, and, and corporate income tax and vice versa. Ideally, that's what it should be. So, the information is technical for forecasting, and it comes from GRA. Of course, the difficult part is, okay, then the Ministry of Finance through its policy division says, I want to introduce a new policy. I want to take, you know, NHIL and uh, as has happened, and get fund from the VAT base, and I want to make it a separate tax called straight, you know, levy. That is new to the system. And it is disrupting the system that they have where these two taxes were considered as, as VAT. Okay, so now they will have to do their best estimates of separating. And remember, the straight levy denies, unlike the VAT previously when it was a VAT, denies input as credit and, and refunds to the taxpayer. So the presumption is that these are going to be additional revenues, but they are going to increase it. You know, because when you give the taxpayer exemption, and you give the taxpayer, you know, uh, sorry, yeah, exemption, let's say exemption, or a credit, or a refund, remember, it's not part of your tax base. So no money is coming from it. But once you, you, you deny them that, the expectation is that you will earn more money. But remember, you are increasing the burden of taxation. And therefore, you increase evasion and avoidance, which is more difficult to calculate. And this is where the overestimation, you know, of the tax or otherwise, you know, takes place. Mm -hmm. So, both customs and now domestic tax division have solid research departments, which we should continue to, 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 to assist. But their knowledge and statistical knowledge, computer knowledge and the rest, is limited to the extent that you don't have a domestic tax system to continue collecting the information. So you may be very solid because of ICOMs on the custom side, but not on the domestic side. This is why it is urgent 
you know, that we do the retraining required, the uh, restructuring of the offices since IRS and VAT were merged, you know, and the automation of that system so that it can interface and do the estimation that you are talking about, you know, better. If you do an overestimation, then obviously, the, since the taxes are going to be paid by taxpayers, they will feel the pinch because their estimates that are given to them after the law is passed will be higher and it may seem higher than what they are capable, you know, of collecting. Okay, so let's, let's uh, end up on the, the flat rates. Let's, yes. Oh, you have a question? Yes, I said let's end up on the simple flat uh, tax rates and the review of the VAT structure. Um, yes, the, the review of the VAT structure, <laughs> I, I mentioned it in person, you know, because it is the most disastrous thing that has happened. And, in fact, if you graph it, if I were in the studio, I would show you. If you graph it, you will see that since these measures were taken, we haven't increased the VAT revenue because together with the levies, you know, increases in the corporate income tax, personal income tax, there is massive efficiency and avoidance. You know, and because the system is not automated on the domestic side, the taxpayers are ahead, you know, of GRA. That's the simple truth. Now, when it comes to the flat rate, what is the flat rate? Are we talking about VAT? Are we talking about corporate income tax, excise, import duty? Most, what the vice president is talking about appears to be for the personal income tax. The personal income tax, which is paid by employees, and by self-employed persons. Remember, if you are an individual, you have a company, you pay the corporate tax. So let me start with the personal income tax. The personal income tax is not just for revenue. The personal income tax in every country is deliberately progressive in that it starts with people who have low income, right, very low income, and therefore they are exempted from paying of any tax. They are the zero, they pay tax as zero which we have been attempting to equate to the minimum wage. So it's assumed that anybody who is earning the minimum wage, you know, cannot, you know, it would be unfair to even collect a tax from him because they are struggling, okay? And they are paying in direct taxes and the rest already. Then there is a 5% rate, so that those who are above minimum wage, that be, be below a certain level where you will say that they are meeting all their obligations, don't have to pay the tax, you know, at 15%. So they pay, say, 10%. So it used to be uh, 0, 5, 10, and then it goes up, and it ended at 25. It was the current government that increased it to 30, and today to 35, like the corporate income tax rate. So whom are they blaming for the complexity of the tax regime, including the removal of uh, get fund and NHIR for the VAT base, you know, so that businesses can get input tax credit and VAT, uh, thinking they will make money, what is called cascading, you know. And so they are the copies, the victims of their own decision, right? Mm -hmm. uh, again, when it's, so the personal income tax, this is the reason it is, it is graduated and deliberately so because of a principle in income taxation that ability to pay. Those who have earned more must pay more. So when you say you are implementing a VAT rate, as flat rates. Are you saying 10%, 15% for everybody, including those who are 35%? You are even going to lose revenue <laughs> because you are bringing my tax obligation all of a sudden from 35%, what used to be 25%, down to what? An average of 15. And then are we saying that those who were paying 5, 10% and, and even not paying tax at all are also going to pay 10%? You see, it's easier said, you know, than done. Right, those who will be comfortable are those who are already paying as 15, they, it doesn't matter to them anymore. Right, uh, but let me also, you know, uh, uh, say quickly that the VAT was a flat rate. Remember, the VAT was introduced at 10 percent flat, apart from the exemptions again for the same reasons of low income. So, it targeted tax, test books, it targeted uh, basic medicine, and the rest, uh, uh, food unprocessed food, which is what the majority of low income. So apart from those, all the tax was at 10%. We increased it to 12.5%. The 2.5% 2 .2 was first get fund. Then we increased it to 15%. The 2.5% 2 .2 became NHIL. You see why these two were being collected as VAT because of the difficulty, you know, in introducing the VAT, right? You know, and, and therefore, 
it was said that if we are going to increase the tax, let us apply it to health and education, you know, so that Ghanaians see the direct benefit of it. Then it was increased to 17.5%, you know, uh, quite recently for the Ghana Infrastructure Investment Fund so that we can, you know, implement better fiscal policy. It's the MPP that came, you know, and introduced the 3%. So if the VAT is multiple tax, it's the MPP. In fact, we reverse this, you know, in the new VAT Act to apply only the single rate, but made a concession so that both uh, for the uh, uh, small business, uh, uh, businesses, SMEs, uh, a certain rate will be paid both for the income tax and for VAT, flat, right? Because the presumptive tax was already there. Again, the current government abolished it, brought a bad flat rate scheme separately. In the current budget, they've gone back to this. So they introduced a complication, I'm afraid. I spoke about the corporate income tax already. That one is flat. And it was at 25%. And we had been bringing it down. You know, I, I was part of that, so I know the history. We had been bringing it down from when it was 55, 6, 65%, and depending on the sector. And the goal was to be competitive at about 20, 20%. We got to 25% after almost three decades. The current government, you know, because all their proposals for meeting their expenditures of revenue increased to 25%. And they increased the the top marginal rate of the income tax, which I, dis I discussed recently, also from 25% to 35%. So, I mean, what, what, what is the reform for? A reform that was implemented and which, against all warning, was distortionary or what? Uh, the other two taxes, which are the penalties, is excise. Excise is punitive. So when you drink more, you pay more. The rates are not flat. They are graduated and whatever, pet particularly petroleum because it's an environmental tax. So if you have a V8, you know, you consume more petrol, you pollute more. Again, it's not true that we don't have a, we have an environmental tax and we will have to introduce some levy for environment. No, all the petroleum taxes were introduced on environmental grounds, except for the ESLA, which was targeting, you know, the payment of contractors and the IPPs, which we know the story there on the expenditure side, right? They were never paid. They were collateralized. We don't know where the amount is today. That uh, ESLA loan, which was collateralized, has become part of the debt exchange because we have defaulted, even on that one. Yet the ESLA revenues keep flowing in. The last one is the import duty. It's also a flat rate. But because we want to industrialize, <laughs> we introduce a lower rate for raw materials and for inputs. Right? Apart from the consumption rate. And then we introduce exemption for on, again, low-income basis, which is equivalent to what I explained with the VAT. That is, we exclude the import duty and then VAT on some basic educational materials, basic medicine. We don't, you know, if you import, of course, if you import raw food into Ghana, you have to pay the tax because, you know, we are deemed to be self-sufficient in all of that. So, Randy, <laughs> the point I'm making is that it is the current government, you know, excuse me to say, that introduced the complexity. You see, I have not even spoken about the 12 or so levies that have been added. Mm. That introduced, and, and those are often a duplication of taxes that were in existence before and replaced by the VAT, similar rates. Now we are bringing all those taxes back. I said we didn't learn any lesson from Kumi Preku. Right? Mm. So... Uh, mm -hmm. I, I hope this gives your, your, your viewers and listeners, you know, some explanation of why, you know, the vice president needs to go, you know, deeper, you know, to understand things which they had done, no accountability, they want to introduce them like amnesty, the complexity of the tax regime, which was sanitized during the year after has been made complex by all these uh, ad hoc decisions which I'm talking about. You know, uh, uh, the, the bitterest one being the street levy and the, and the levies. And then I hope I've also explained, you know, what is failed on this. It, it is not a conscious, you know, five year. It turns out to be an average because the taxpayer population is huge. And you normally, right. you know, target it, you know, on a random basis. Okay. And so on a random basis, 
you know, uh, uh, it's not possible to, to tax, sorry, to go and do a field audit of everybody. We should be careful because tax audit is a regular function. It is not about GRA sending people to go and harass people. No, it's a regular tax function. If we want to avoid it looking like, you know, harassment, then let's equip VRA with the ITAS, the domestic tax system, so that I can gather information on taxpayers using the tax office number and using the national identification number, which used to be the tax ID number, you know, to gather information about them so that when they go, they are producing evidence to them of things which they have done in the economy which they have not disclosed. All right. You know, I hope I have a... Uh, uh, dancer, yes, yes, you yes. Have any questions? Yes, you have, but there's a lot to talk about. So I'm sure we'll do our one on one next week. Um, we'll, I'm looking forward to it. Yes, question. we'll do our one on one next week, uh, definitely <clears throat> by the by the Easter. But thanks, thanks a lot, um, Honorable Setepe, for for joining us uh, this morning. We're most grateful. so far so good. Say open online portal at Ghana. Ah, you can share, you can follow, you can comment here. To my best of knowledge, without any biases, I uh, append TV.